Hello, my name is Odin, I'm the creator of Super Club, and this is how you play. Setup is quick and easy, especially if everyone pitches in. The first thing you do is to select your team and collect your items. You need a manager folder, a club pad, a points marker, a squad token, two dice, and 120 million in bills. Place the game board in the middle of the table and start filling the card slots with cards and bill slots with bills. Complete the setup by placing the draft board above the main game board and start preparing for the draft. Until you've completed the draft, you keep the remainder of the cards uh, in the box or at least off the table. Before the draft, roll one dice to uh, decide who goes first and then place 16 player cards on the draft board face up. Once there are 16 players on the draft board, you start uh, picking. If red goes first this round, I might say pick uh, Blanco, a five-star attacker with chemistry, but there are many good players here. Uh, we have the expansion pack also here, so we have some utility players who can play everywhere. Uh, and we have some uh, super talents with uh, one, two, six stars, which is also in the expansion pack. But uh, Blue goes next, might pick Parker here. Five star midfielder with chemistry. The next uh, one would be maybe a toss up between uh, Santi, a utility player who can play everywhere, and Havens, also a four star, but with chemistry. So uh, perhaps uh, Santi for, uh, for the versatility, and then Havens. Uh, for for yellow uh, and then it would be uh, my turn again and perhaps yeah go for go for Melnik uh, another attacker fits the chemistry with a with a great attack and so on around the table until uh, the board is empty that's when you load it up again and you complete this process as many times as there are managers in the game with everyone uh, getting to go first uh, one time uh, when you've completed all the rounds, everyone should be left with 16 players in your starting squads. There's only one more rule in the draft, and that is no Garibaldi. He's the best player in the game, six-star uh, attacker, the only six-star player to begin with. And if you get him in the draft, you put him back in the stack. Uh, he should uh, not be part of the draft. Anyway, once you've completed the draft, you flip the draft board to reveal the world of football, and only now do you place the remaining cards on the table. The key staff cards, the Super Cup cards, and all the remaining player cards about equally distributed across the six continents that we have in the world of Super Club. After you've uh, completed the draft, uh, you're ready to start playing. And Super Club alternates between two phases. It's the off-season where you improve your squad, and it's the season where you play matches uh, for points. So you start with an off-season. Uh, we'll uh, pretend that we've uh, come some uh, way in the game now, uh, and we start in an off-season in the middle of the game, because uh, those are a little bit more exciting than the first off-season, where for instance, the finest, finance step is just to hand out the starting cash. So let's pretend we're in the middle of the game. And in the off-season, uh, the manager folders are always open so uh, that everyone can see everyone else's squad and what they have and what they don't have. Uh, there are no secrets in the off-season. So this is my uh, squad right here. Uh, I have my squad token placed at the total amount of stars that I have in my squad, which is 66 at the moment. As you can see, I have a, a decent uh, squad, at least a decent uh, starting 11, and some resources on the bench as well, four-star utility player, and a couple of key staff cards uh, that we'll get back to. So the off-season consists of five steps, and finance is the first one. This is where you gather your earnings and pay your wages and see how uh, much money you have to play with during the rest of the off-season where you strengthen your squad and your club. 
So the final step uh, is pretty easy. You get a placement bonus uh, for uh, where you finished on the table the last season. So I finished second last season, which means I get a 90 million payout for my placement. First place get 100, third place get 80, uh, and so on. So we'll just keep the boost ship there and get back to that later. The second step of the finances uh, is the stadium income. And you can um, find your stadium income on your stadium card on your club pad. So currently I have the Red Valley Arena, which is the, the second development on the, um, uh, on the stadium, uh, which gives me 100 million if I finish the season uh, with my points marker on a title contender status. Um, Mid-table gives me 80 million, established would give me 60 million, and so on. So you collect uh, the corresponding number uh, from your list on the stadium card. Uh, the third point is wages, and wages are, uh, is really simple. Uh, you just pay uh, your squad strength times 1 million. So that would be 66 million in wages for me this season, because maintaining a good squad does not come for free. There's also an optional pro rule called uh, buy unhappy players that we'll get into later. Uh, but if you want to read more about it, you can do so in uh, the rule book that comes with the game. The second stage of the off season is training. Training is where you develop your young, talented players uh, into better players and sometimes uh, superstars. And you do that in your training center, uh, your training facility. In my case, a training center. Uh, that is the second development of the, of the training ground. And uh, it gives me the ability to add a maximum of three stars to three players. So the first thing I can do is select three players that I would like to attempt to develop. So I'll get Ferraro, Lysenko and Lima. And the way you spot talents is by the hollow stars, in addition to their full stars. So you can see their potential here. Ferraro can become a six star player, Lysenko a four star and a Lima a five star player. And the better they are, the more difficult it is to develop these players because you need to roll the same amount of eyes as the stars that you want them to reach. So if I start with Ferraro, uh, I need to roll a five or a six in order to develop him into a better player. So. That's a one, so obviously that doesn't work. Ferraro is gone. Lysenko, I only need a three or a four to get him to a better level, and that's another one. So I have one chance left, and that is Lima. I need a four or a five. That is a four, so I do get one extra star to my attacker called Lima. What I do then is I uh, look in the top left corner, and uh, you see a number, 1112 in Lima's case. So that is Lima's development cards. Then I pick up this stack and find the corresponding number in the top left corner here. So 11 will be Lima, four stars. There he is. I put this back and my original Lima goes in the inactive players pile and the new and improved Lima goes into my squad. Uh, the last thing I do is to uh, mark my improved squad with my squad token. So I had 66 stars total before I developed Lima. Now I have 67 as my uh, starting point for next season. The third stage in the off season is scouting, and that's another great way to build a super club. The first thing you do is to check your scouting card. I have uh, regional scouting, which uh, gives me the ability to scout two players. Uh, I scout from the world of football, and I can choose the continent I want to scout from, or choose different uh, continents. So I will go one from North America and one from Africa for this. From North America, Irish, uh, a one-star player, so not very good. And from Africa, Blanco, uh, a five-star attacker with the potential to become a six-star attacker and with chemistry on the left side. So that's a great player. 
Uh, and when you scout, you can sign them on a sheet because there's no competition for them. The scouting price is listed in the bottom right corner next to the binoculars. Um, Irish costs 5 million and Blanco 36 million, which might sound like a lot, but it's a really good price for such a quality player. So obviously I will go for Blanco and pay 36 uh, for him. And uh, I think I will let Irish go back to the inactive players pile. Blanco goes into my squad. I pay 40 million. I get four in return. Like so. And mark the progress on the board. When I'm done, uh, we go around the table, everyone does their scouting before we move on to the next stage. The fourth stage of the off-season is investments, long-term investments. And this is not where you strengthen your squad directly, you rather strengthen your, uh, your club and your long-term chances for success. So there are four things you can do, but you only have two actions. Uh, you can uh, expand your training facilities, your uh, scouting department or your stadium. Uh, the training obviously helps you train better, the scouting uh, helps you scout more players, and uh, the stadium uh, allows you to make more money. But you can also hire key staff members, which are found uh, up on the World of Football board. What you do is you draw two key staff members and you decide which one you want to sign. You cannot sign uh, both. You can choose to sign neither, but you spend an action either way. So here I've drawn last ditch tackle. He's the defensive coach, giving me plus two in defense. I have uh, also drawn uh, line up read. She's a data analyst. Uh, it gives me a captain boost uh, plus two, uh, which is pretty strong. Uh, she costs 40 million and last ditch tackle costs 20 million. I think I will go for last ditch tackle in this uh, instance. He's uh, pretty cheap and uh, the extra plus two in defense will really help me. The key staff that I don't sign goes to the bottom of the pile. Last ditch tackle goes in here. Since he's a defensive coach, just something I prefer to do is to place him near down by the defense, but you don't, you don't have to. Uh, the development cards for your club pad is found here, right on the game board. Uh, there is every uh, club's uh, card in every category. So once you decide to uh, develop either of those aspects of your club, you can see the price on the card. Uh, the current level is underlined and then the next level in line is the price for your next upgrade. So that was the investments phase and that's the last phase before deadline day, which obviously is the last thing that happens before the new season begins. The last thing on the agenda before the new season starts is deadline day. Uh, deadline day is really simple, it's a free-for-all bidding war on one more player than there are managers in the game. So if we are four managers, a total of five players will be uh, turned, one after another, uh, and uh, the bidding war may begin. So it's as simple as this. Turn a player card. This is Popa. He's a three-star midfielder with chemistry to the left and six-star potential. And you can see in the bottom left corner, there is a price we haven't talked about yet. That is the minimum price that he will go for on uh, deadline day. If nobody signs him for 36 million in this case, he will go to the inactive players pile. But once Popa is down, uh, it's a free-for-all bidding. Uh, you can start the bidding, you can sit and wait, uh, whatever you, you, you want to do. You can choose if you want to have a timer or something, or if you just want to uh, have the bidding war go on and on until everyone agrees that. Uh, one of the managers uh, will get, in this case, Popa. So when he is sold to purple, turn the next 
player. This is Sabo from South America. And you repeat the process until we've, in this case, uh, bid for five players. And once deadline day is done, it's time to play matches in the season. With the off-season done and dusted, it's time for the season. Now, you can have as strong a squad as you like and be a well-run club. If you can't produce on the pitch, nothing else matters. In the season, you may close your manager folder and hide uh, all your little operations, but for you to see what I'm doing now in this tutorial, I will keep it open. The season is also where the point marker comes into play. You start from a squad token and you aim for the top from there. You select your starting 11 from your squad and uh, players have different natural positions. That doesn't mean they have to play there, but they play their best in their natural position. So green players are attackers, yellow players are midfielders, red players are defenders, light red are goalkeepers. And here we also have a purple utility player uh, that only comes in the expansion pack. Before you place your players in the slots, your folder will look like this. And here you can see some slots have colored backgrounds and those are mandatory slots. Uh, there are nine of them, uh, which means that you have two left to build your own formation. Now, in, in this case down here, I've gone for a 3-4-3 three, three plus goalkeeper, but you can also uh, do five in the midfield, four in, uh, in attack, uh, four in defense, uh, but only 11 players total, uh, of course. Before the match, you obviously need to be happy with your own selection. And if we take a look at our uh, team right here, it looks pretty good, but we've recently scouted Blanco, who should go into the team. And it might be natural to think that he should replace Schneider in attack. He has the same chemistry star, uh, which obviously when uh, you have two opposing chemistry stars, you get one extra star in that third. Uh, Blanco could go straight in there and give us an extra star. But in this case, it would make more sense perhaps to replace a midfielder with Blanco. Harold has three stars, Blanco has five stars. Blanco will lose half a star when he, uh, when he plays out of position. You lose one half star uh, for each third you move across. So if Blanco were to play as a defender, uh, he would lose an entire star, but when he plays as a midfielder, he only loses half a star. So to replace Harold with Blanco uh, would give us an extra one and a half star in our lineup, which I think will be uh, the sensible thing to do here. So you have some flexibility with your players. The most flexible players are, of course, the utility players who can play everywhere, only in the exp expansion pack. But the midfielders are the second most uh, flexible players. They can play both as attackers and defenders and only lose half a star. Um, so that's something to think about when you uh, draft your team and also when you scout and when you uh, bid for players on deadline day. From the second season onward, you also get one of these. This is the captain boost. And it does, does a few things. It shows your place. It shows your payout for getting that place. And it shows the boost you get uh, from getting that place. So the higher you placed, the less of a boost you get. Uh, I placed second last season, which means I get a plus two uh, in my desired third um, for every match. So you, you place this in a player slot, effectively making that player your captain. Uh, should Van Winkel in this case get injured, uh, I would lose my captain boost also for this game, but I could select a new captain for my next game. In every football season, there are a few key matches that determine the outcome of the entire season. Now, in Super Club, there are five of them, and you play five key matches every time. Uh, the fixture list is found on the board under the season uh, headline. Uh, and uh, there you see, depending on how many players you are in the game or managers you are in the game, uh, when to play against uh, whom. When you're ready to start playing, you reveal your teams. Both players reveal their teams. And you start by comparing midfield to midfield. Super club matches are played in three thirds. Uh, and you need to win two of them to win the match. 
Uh, it always starts with a, with a midfield battle, and here you simply count the amount of stars that you have in your midfield. Uh, you add bonuses you might have from, uh, from uh, key staff members and uh, boost chips. If, uh, if the captain boost is in this third, you also include that. Then you roll two dice and you get your final score. And that was a three and a six, which is a nine. And I think this is 20 and a half, including two chemistry stars and therapy sessions. So 20 and a half plus nine gives me 29 and a half in the field. So that is then compared to my opponent's total after having done the same thing. If I win, I go on the attack with my attack against my opponent's defense. And we repeat the process. Uh, if my opponent wins uh, that and holds, uh, uh, holds the defense, then we go on to his or her attack against my defense. And whoever wins that final third will win the match. If I were to win the match, I would get six points, which I will mark on the board with my points marker. So six points from 71 is 77. In case of a draw, I would only get two points, uh, up to 73. And the reason we give six and two points instead of three and one, which is more, more common in football, let's say, uh, is for brevity's sake. Uh, we could uh, play through the, the fixture list twice uh, and uh, give uh, three and one points. Obviously, a, a, a loss will always be zero points. Um, but for a shorter game, uh, we recommend that you play only one game against each opponent every season and then give out six or two points for a win or draw respectively. There are some special events during matches in Super Club and that is when you roll a double dice. Any double dice uh, will trigger a special event. So say if we roll a double three in midfield, that means that my third player from the left is injured and the injury is season ending. So if you're in the first game of the season, that's just horrible. If you're in the last game of the season, that is not so important because he'll be back for the next game. But if I were to roll double three, uh, my third player from the left is Huti. So Huti, uh, a star midfielder, would be injured. I'll move him to the bench, face him uh, down and select a replacement and then in this case, Harold's uh, stars would count in the match for me. So uh, uh, that's uh, the injury part. If I, however, rolled a double five or a double six, a slot where I don't have a player, that would give me a game changer card. Uh, game changer card cards are special events. They can be good, they can be bad, they can be really good or horrible, uh, but uh, the only way you get them is by rolling a double dice in a slot where you don't have a player. So double six will always be a game changer card because there are no uh, thirds with, um, with six slots. Uh, and double five most of the time will be game changer cards. Also sometimes double three, double four. Uh, game changer cards are saved until uh, the end of um, the game or the match. Uh, and then you read them either out loud, if it says uh, to read them out loud, or you save it if it is a tactical game changer card. When playing fewer than six managers, there are some simulated matches, in addition to the matches that you play against your opponents, because every season it consists of five matches no matter what. When you are simulating a match, you grab your two dice and you check your, your status level for um, how much you need to roll in order to draw or to win. The better squad you have, uh, the lower you can roll and still win. So it, it really pays to have a, a good squad when you simulate matches and you check this by checking for your squad token, not your points marker. So uh, I am uh, on the mid table. Uh, that means I need to roll a six or a seven to draw or an eight or higher to win. 2 to 5 is a loss. So let's see. That is a 5. So that's a loss and I get 0 points from that simulation, which is uh, really annoying for me. 
When all the games of the season are played, it's time to find out if we have a winner. Now, there's two ways to win a super club. Uh, one way, and the, the main way, is to get 100 points. If you reach 100 points, you win. Uh, but there's also another way, if you're not quite at the 100-point uh, level, but you're still dominating the, uh, dominating the game. If you manage to win three seasons, then you will have three Super Cup cards, because the winner of the season gets a Super Cup card. You can then choose to play the Super Cup Final. If you win the Super Cup Final, you win the game. Now, Super Cup cards are received when you win one season. And, very important, do not look at the Super Cup cards uh, when you do win a season. When you have three of them, you draw your opponent in the final from those three without looking. In this instance, I drew Lisbon as my Super Cup final opponent. And uh, Lisbon is a side that are very strong in midfield, uh, with 21, 18 in attack and 17 in defense. Before I look at my card, I will already have set up uh, my team uh, without knowing who I'll face. So I can see that it's very close between me and uh, Lisbon, so maybe I should have waited um, another season or two uh, to try and uh, get a little bit better team, better squad, before I, I play the Super Cup final. But perhaps some of the others are catching up to me and um, getting close to that 100-point mark, so it might be, be worth the risk. Most seasons, though, will not have a game winner, only a season winner. That means that there's another season right around the corner. But before that, another off-season, where you improve your squad and your club. Play as many seasons as you need in order to beat your friends and your family. That's the most important thing of Super Club. Good luck. We have an optional pro rule in Super Club that is a lot of fun to play with, if you take the time to learn it. So uh, it's called Buy Unhappy Players, and the basis of the, uh, of the rule is that uh, very good players do not want to play for average teams. Now, in my case, I have the best player in the game, Mr. Garibaldi, in my team. And, as you can see, he's a six-star player. If I end up on the mid-table status level, that means I only have a player appeal, of five stars, and Garibaldi is unhappy to play from my side. If one of my opponents, say Yellow, finishes as a title contender with a player appeal of six stars, he or she can then submit a bid for Garibaldi uh, with one, <clears throat> with 15 million times the amount of stars. So 90 million uh, force my hand. So I have still two options. I can. Uh, choose to let him go and say, okay, 90 million, you'll get Guy Bali. I can also negotiate and say, nah, if you, I'll wait for 120. But if I, if I decide not to sell Guy Bali, to keep him, he will still be unhappy and I cannot play him that season. He will have to sit on the bench. It will not hurt my squad, however. I will still uh, have my squad token as if Garibaldi was in my, uh, was in my squad, uh, but I can't use him in-game. What I will get in return for that is uh, one star to one of my talents, because somebody has to step up when Garibaldi all of a sudden is out of the game. So I can choose one of my talents, and it just so happens that I have Blanco in my team. He is a five-star um, attacker now, but he has six-star potential. So. I will naturally choose Blanco uh, for my compensatory star, and Blanco is number six, so then Blanco will be the one that I choose to step up after Garibaldi has made a fool of himself and refused to play for the mighty Red Valley Rovers for the upcoming season, and Yellow Bay Town is then left without Garibaldi, but with their 90 or 120 million, and they've caused me some damage, but I have some compensation, uh, given that I get one free development star to one of my players when the buy unhappy players rule is triggered. 
thank you so much for watching and thank you for your interest in uh, Super Club. There are little things, little nuances of the game that we don't have time to cover in this short introduction video. So please check out the always updated rulebook at uh, superclubgame.com. Thanks again for watching and good luck.